As I mentioned at the open of the show, parts of the Midwest, including Nebraska, saw heavy rains last week, totaling 8 inches in parts of Iowa and Minnesota and up to 12 inches in northeast Nebraska. For growers in large chunks of the state, the moisture has come early and often, and for some, hail and high winds have tormented corn and soybean crops. Earlier this week, we talked with DTN senior ag meteorologist Bryce Anderson to ask if there was a reason behind these weather events and to see what might be in store through July and August. We've seen a lot of rain, a lot of hail, and a few tornadoes already this year in Nebraska. How common are this many events? The, uh, well, the, the idea that uh, we get uh, you know, severe weather uh, during uh, early season uh, for, for the uh, growing season here in the state. I mean, that's, you know, that's kind of typical. Uh, but the, uh, the occurrence uh, on almost a regular schedule every two weeks starting back in mid-May, that's a little bit out of line. Uh, usually you think that there's going to be a pretty intense period for maybe about three weeks or so, and then uh, things start settling out. And we haven't seen that uh, all the way into mid-June. Are there reasons behind this? I think that what we're seeing uh, is, uh, is the result of uh, a, a long-standing uh, weather feature uh, over the Canadian prairies in, in north central Canada that uh, has been an area of blocking high pressure up in the higher latitudes that has forced the storm track uh, kind of consistently south here over the uh, north central part of the country. And then you add that uh, into uh, a little bit of an indication of some El Nino related energy out of the Pacific and the uh, development of a Bermuda high over the southeastern U.S. And so we've had uh, a lot of fairly consistent factors coming together to keep things uh, on this real stormy trail that we've had. With that in mind, I'll ask you a two part question. First, would you consider these events extreme weather events? And two, is this going to be normal? Uh, you know, years into the future? Well, I think that uh, we can say that uh, these, these weather events have been extreme, um, particularly uh, with uh, some of the tornado outbreaks uh, that we saw in northeastern Nebraska. I mean, th this has been a year where the storm track has been focused uh, kind of over the north. There were more tornadoes in Nebraska during the, the, uh, the month of June so far than we have seen in Oklahoma all year, for example. Uh, so that is really kind of, you know, out of, out of line, so to speak. And as far as are these going to be more frequent, is extreme the new normal to, uh, to, point, to use a cliche? It really looks like it is, Jeff, because uh, we have seen over the past uh, 10 years or so that, that other than hurricanes, extremes in, in dryness, in, uh, in heavy rain, in high winds or tornadoes, they have been well above a 100 year average across the country. What do you expect once we go to July and August? There are probably not only farmers who have their crops this high, but also farmers who are just at the ground level who have replanted as well. At this point, uh, July it looks like it's gonna be a pretty good month uh, for the Corn Belt because uh, the, the models are showing fairly mild temperatures. Uh, we've seen that so far. Uh, the, uh, the idea that we're gonna have a sudden turnaround to a real hot pattern uh, that's pretty much uh, not really a part of things at this point. And then uh, we've obviously had a fairly active uh, precipitation track, and uh, that's the way uh, things are playing out as well. So I think that uh, July is shaping up to be mostly favorable. And any thoughts or any indications of what August might hold? August uh, sort of runs the same way. I think we could see a little bit of a warmer trend in August, but still nothing that's going to just be a, a real stressful uh, month in regard to uh, temperature and uh, precipitation. This is shaping up to be one of the uh, better seasons that we've had. And I should point out also that uh, June 22nd, uh, the, the uh, crop uh, ratings on June 22nd at 74% good to excellent for corn were some of the highest that we've seen for, you know, for a while. And uh, going back to the mid-1980s, when you start out the crop season with those kind of ratings, it usually uh, leads to a, a very good corn crop. We heard so much about a La Nina pattern earlier this year. You wrote about an El Nino hybrid type of thing. Tell me more about it. Well, there, there is uh, some discussion uh, in climate circles on both sides of the Pacific, U.S. and uh, Australia, that uh, what is actually happening in the Pacific is uh, going to be an El Nino uh, development 
but one that has basically warm water in the middle of the ocean and then cooler on either side. That's called an El Nino Motokai, and it was first identified back in 1986. If that uh, develops, it, it may lead to a little less uh, persistent rainfall later this fall in the far west and in the southern plains, but it also might uh, mean that uh, hurricane action is a little bit greater than if we would have just a straight El Nino.